Okay, well, welcome again. We're going to continue on uh, our reading of Mark's Gospel. We were up to chapter 4 and um, starting about verse 26. So we, we get a series of parables here and then a little point about the, Jesus' use of parables. There's, it's not clear how these parables fit in in terms of the timeline of what's happening. Um, and there's some ev evidence here that He's, that Mark is in fact translating some sort of um, Hebrew or Aramaic original. Uh, we can see that from some of the strange grammar that's here. Um, anyway, so, um, and he, El again, he was saying, and we get this um, odd construction here, Hutos Estin, the kingdom of God is thus, and we get Hose. And it's probably hose for, and in fact, hose for hose et And in fact, some um, some later texts actually add in an et an at this point to help with the grammar. And we're getting a pile of subjunctives. So whatever this hose is here, we have to understand an et an, I think. So the kingdom of God is thus, is as if... Anthropos, a man, and it's followed by lots of subjunctives, might cast, aorist uh, subjunctive, might cast the seed upon the land. Kai kathude, again subjunctive, after this supposed eon, we have to think we have to supply. And he sleeps and he gets up, another subjunctive here. Nukta kai hemaran, by night and by day. And the sporos, the seed, blastar, is from a contracted verb from blastao. It springs up. This is a good, good, good classical word. Um, so it springs up. Um, and may kunetai, again, it's subjunctive. Um, and it grows. It literally means to be made longer. So, uh, so it grows. And another strange use of hose here, um, which must here translate something as how. So, and he himself does not know how. And he himself does not know how. Automate is an adjective with gay here. It's not that common in the New Testament and it turns up in the Septuagint occasionally, but it's a perfectly good classical word. Um, so the earth of its own accord. We get our word automatic from this and it might be nice to try use that, make it into an adverb and say the, the earth automatically, carpa fore, brings forth fruit. This is from forio, another form of ferro, so bears fruit. So the earth by itself bears fruit. Firstly, caught on, fairly vague word, can mean grass, probably here a green shoot uh, eta ben stuckus, this is a, a, a head of grain, uh, and then plere, the plere, is, is the sigma has been bracketed here so that this agrees with sit on, um, and then wheat, and then it is full of wheat on the grain, on the head of the grain. So then it becomes, then the head of grain becomes full of wheat we translate perhaps in English. The Greek is rather awkward. Hotan for hot te plus an, whenever the fruit, paradoi, this is a, this is a subjunctive form from para uh, didomi, and the meaning here is permits, which is a word that's occasionally seen with that, that meaning in classical Greek. So whenever the fruit permits, i.e. When, when it's come to fruition, immediately Apostele, he sends out Todrepinon, the sickle. Hotty, because the therismos, this is the harvest, peristaken, we would just say, well, it literally stands there, stands ready, and just say is here, because the, the harvest is here, literally stands ready. So we get a second um, parable, 
introduced again by Kai L again, and he was saying, uh, again, the grammar is slightly odd here because this is um, probably some translation of some rabbinical expression which would have been written in either Hebrew or Aramaic. So um, it's literally, how shall we compare? So we get these um, subjunctives here. How shall we compare the kingdom of God or literally um, we will place it in which par in, in what parable so but by using what parable shall we place it so what parable shall we compare it to um, hose coco sun apios uh, again this is odd use of hose something like like uh, it is like the cocos the seed sonapios of a mustard so like the mustard seed hos which whenever spare it is sown this is the aorist passive subjunctive so whenever it is sown on the land on is a par neuter participle from own so being Microteron being smaller and then comparative gender gender comparison being smaller than all the seeds of those upon the earth. Um, we get a little bit of ascendant in here where the, the grammar doesn't quite fit, um, but lit, so it's literally whenever it is sown on the ground. You could take the participle as being concessive here. So although it is the smallest of all the, the seeds of those upon the ground, um, and whenever spare it is sown, anabino, it grows up, literally it, it stands up, and becomes merzon, greater, panton ton lacano. Now, lacano is... In classical Greek, the word for vegetables, I think it's the same in modern Greek, lakana. Probably here, just any garden plant. So it becomes greater than all the plants of the garden, and poie, it makes, so we'd say produces, uh, great cladus, great leaves, posti plus accusative in infinitive, so that. Now, the subject of this is, of, after the accusative infinitive, is ta petena, literally the flying thing. So the birds of heaven are able, kataske nonu, and this is an infinitive. The verb is ske no o, and this is the contracted infinitive here. Um, and it means, generally, I think here, taken to mean to nest. So that the birds of the, of the heaven are able to nest under its shadow. A little bit more on parables. And he was speaking to them with all such parables. So with, with, with so many such parables, he was speaking to them the word. Cathos, just as a do not this is the imperfect it's got a double augment which is um, odd but it's what happened to this verb so it is from dunamai but it's a double imperative so just as they were able to hear so it's almost as much as they could bear as much as they were able to hear and he did not speak to them chorus parabolis except on the parable um, uh, de, but Cat idion is idiomatic, means privately. So, but privately, um, ep eluen he expounded panta all things to his own disciples. To his own disciples, ep, this is uh, epiluo to expand, expound. It's only here in uh, the Gospels, and it's used in um, in Acts nineteen. Debt normally comes second in the sentence, but because you're beginning, it's beginning with this idiomatic phrase, katidianis, postponed the debt to the third word. 
Um, and he, in that day, <coughs> so um, he, he says to them, on that day, and we get a, this is a genitive absolute, and again we have to supply Horace here, which is, happens a lot here, it's just idiomatic, so this means late, and we have to understand Horace as the noun. So the hour having become late, on that day he says to them, historic present, DL Thurman, let us go, as top peran, literally to the opposite, so to the other side, presumably of the lake. Kai Afentes from Afiemi, having let go, having dismissed the crowd, uh, para lambanusi, um, they took him. Now this is odd here, it says hose ain, so it, it literally as he was. Um, in the boat. So it must mean something like he didn't get out of the boat, he just stayed in the boat, so just as he was sitting in the boat. Um, and a la ploya and other boats and metu were with him. New to plural singular verb. Um, and a great lilaps. Now a lilaps is a storm uh, a gust of wind, a great storm of, of wind took place, Ginatai happened, and the waves, new to plural singular verb, and the waves, epi bello, uh, well probably hit against or smashed against into the boat. Hosty plus infinitive again, so that 80, 80 at that time, 80 often means now, but in, in many of these constructions, when you especially with a hostie, it means at that time. So that at that time, the boat, again, this is from Gemizdo, this is the um, eris, this, this is the present infinitive, to be filled. So that the boat was filled, understand, with water. And he himself was, probably best take that with the participle as periphrastic, he was sleeping in the stern on the pillow, a proscephalion, the thing you hold towards your head. And they raised him up, they woke him up, and they say to him, historic present, didascally, O teacher, this is impersonal, is it not concern, is there no concern for you, hottie, that we are perishing? And dear Agathes, and having been having gotten up, Epitimes and he rebuked, takes a dative, the wind, and he said to the sea, Be silent, pephimoso. This is from this phimoo word again we saw earlier in Mark. It means to be muzzled. This is a perfect passive imperative here, which is very rare. Perfect passive imperative. Um, so it's to be silent and remain so, is the sense of it. And the wind, copasto, is to cease. The wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he says to them, he, sorry, he said to them, Why are you deloi? Why are you cowards? Uh, not yet, do you not yet have faith? And they feared a great fear. This is a, a Semitism. They feared a great fear. And they said, were saying to one another, Who then is this man, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And that is the end of chapter 4.